This is literally everything you need to know about the timeline column inside of monday.com. By the way, if you'd like us to help you set up monday.com for your business, check out the link below. We would love to help. As you can see here, I'm inside of my example monday.com system. Now, this is going to be a comprehensive walkthrough of literally everything there is to know about the timeline column, so man managing projects, managing stages. I'm going to show you dependencies and also the Gantt view as well. So first and foremost, we want to go ahead and add a new timeline column. So press the plus button on the far right hand side and we're just going to search for the timeline column you can see here that it's very basic you can click into it and you can select some dates now the difference between a timeline column and a date column inside of monday.com is a timeline column allows you to select a start date and also an end date so it will span over a period of time whereas a date column in monday is just one day so as you can see here i can select the fourth and span it over to the 18th i can span it over to whenever you can see here that you've got these different colors now the blue indicates that it was in the past if i set the 18th to the 28th you can see that it's in black which means it's in the future and then if i select between past past and also now pr present the 18th and also the future you've got the blue and you have the black so the blue being in the past the black being in the future awesome so that's just the <laughs> the absolute basics it's really easy to select the month and also the year you can select different dates and obviously you've got your start date and end date very simple to set up the next thing that i want to show you is clicking into your timeline column so you can see here you've got this three dotted button and you can go to settings now we've got a few different options here i'm going to be walking you through all of them but first and foremost you can customize your timeline column so you can show the week number if you'd like to so if you select that option and you click in you'll see the week number on the left hand side here this is the week number relative to the year so we are scarily in week 34 of the year um, so it just allows you to see that with ease if that's at all important to you if you go to settings customize you can also set this timeline column as a milestone i'll come on to what that moment means in a moment you can also enable or disable weekends so if you don't want weekends to be visible in your view um you can see that they're grayed out and then the count will be slightly different so you can see if i select between here and here you can see how that reflects accordingly so weekends blurred out or can be included that's just the number of days it does give you a warning sign there so if you go to customize allow selection of weekend days and include them in t items duration so if you don't want that to include if you don't want the weekends to be included in the item duration you can disable it i suspect for most people you would have this disabled if i'm honest with you You've also got show set as milestone now this completely changes the way that a timeline column can work so by standard you've got your start date and you've got the end date whereas if you set it as a milestone you can select just one date on the timeline column but the milestone indicates that that is a, a an objective date so we're working towards that so within project management for example you might have a series of different tasks they span over a series of days within a month within a year but you also have objectives so by this particular date let's say the 28th we want to in have completed all of this or x y and z for example and that is indicated by the diamond shape here so you can see that this is a milestone and that will be represented on a gantt view which i'll show you in a moment's time okay so just bear that in mind with the milestones um by standard you can't even see it so if i go to the settings customize timeline column remove show setters timeline you can see that that's not even a visible option so you do need to turn that on again well uh the milestone sorry i will uh i'll come on to what the milestone does uh later on in the video or why it might be slightly useful so also if we go to the three dotted button go to settings we've got set as a deadline so this essentially means that you're setting the timeline column as a deadline in conjunction with other columns on the board. So the status column indicates the status based on the timeline. So you're connecting like you can clearly see with this fancy looking graph here or a GIF, shall I say, um, that you connect the status and the due date and the owner all as one so they all talk to one another so you can see the status and also if i select the person column which is just a people column on the board here and press connect columns you can see that because the status and i just add like a completed status here because 
the status is completed the timeline is marked as green and done if i change if i change this to let's say back here you can see that now the timeline is in red because we are behind schedule because this is due to be completed but the status has not been marked as completed so this is now flagging that this is behind schedule whereas before it was just in the blue as i'm sure you noticed so it had no direct correlation between being completed or not being completed if i then change the status to completed that then updates and reflects automatically as you can see here so you can see if you hover over it you can uh, see further information as well eight days uh and i think if we hover over it there uh, why is it not working done five days after deadline so it does track the information as well how much later it was completed when as opposed to when it or compared to when it was meant to be completed so that is always quite helpful i quite frequently use that especially for managing tasks so if this is task one this is task two this is task three you'd have your different timelines set and then the timeline column would be associated with the status column when the status is marked as completed then it would update on the timeline etc etc cool so other stuff to show you go to settings again we've got connect with the duration now this is quite interesting what you can go ahead and do is you can add a numbers column so if i just add a numbers column i'm going to call this duration and then i'm just you can position it wherever you like but what you can do is you can connect your timeline with a numbers column by connecting with a duration you can see here you've got the drop down menu here can choose a duration column and i've already created one so i press connect columns and this essentially means that if i set these dates here uh let's just go with the 21st to the 29th as an example i'll remove this or just keep the status as open you can see that this then sets the duration as seven days automatically it automatically populates it and knows that the duration for that is five days or whatever the case may be so that's the number of days between the start time and the end time for that timeline column now this also feeds back to when we have weekends enabled or disabled as well so the duration will be reflected in the duration column but if you have weekends enabled, then the duration might be longer because it will include or at least count the weekends as well. Um, whereas, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On this one, if I click into this now, three dotted button and go to customize and then enable weekends, what should happen is, I mean, this might not do it now, but if we just go there and there, I don't think it's going to update because I changed the settings, but you can see it's now nine. It's exactly the same days, but because we're including the weekends in the duration count, then the number has changed. It didn't change automatically. Unfortunately, Monday's not perfect, but you kind of get the idea. Uh, again, I'm just going to go back into this and disable the weekends, and then I'm just going to update this again, and that's exactly the same days, but it now says seven. What you can also do, however, is because you have the duration column available to you, if I then change this to 20, it will update automatically. So it will automatically add 20 days from the start date. Now, what's quite interesting about this is if I add 10 days, and I'm just going to remove this completed column there. Um, if I change this to 10 days, it will set today's date and then plus 10 days. So you can see here, it automatically works it out. So you can make changes to the timeline column from the duration column based on the number of days. So if I change this to 50, this will span from the start date, which is the 25th of August, all the way to the 31st of October, if that is, wow, that's soon. Um, 50 days away uh, from the 25th, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and then you can see that it automatically updates. So that duration column is quite helpful. Um, and then you can do account and there are other things that you can do with the duration column when managing tasks managing projects etc stick to the timeline for the time being we go to settings as well we can set due date reminders so when timeline arrives and this is just automation so when let's say when date arrives or one day after or one day before timeline arrives and status is completed notify someone again if we go to our automate at the top right hand corner here and just create automations you can see that timeline so date arrives if we select this date arrives option when date and then the date being timeline start date or timeline end date so the date arrives essentially when this particular date arrives and then we can use the start date of the timeline or the end date of the timeline as a trigger for other things to happen within the monday.com system so this is quite helpful to know uh not many people are aware of this but you can use to the timeline column in conjunction with automations and i think the automation functionality with the timeline column has actually got a lot better recently 
um it used to be pretty shambolic but it's it's got quite good now um so hopefully that makes sense if i then click into this we've got restrict column editing this is other basic stuff and we can also set the column as required which is a new feature within monday.com you might not have access to this yet essentially this sets the column as required so if i were to create a new item we now get this pop-up screen that we have to enter in a timeline in order to complete the new item. As you can see here, create item. And this little form prevents us from adding items to our board without inf with information missing from a required column. Required column data point. Yeah, <laughs> that's where I'm going with that. Cool. So that's kind of the timeline column in a nutshell. Now, what most people use the timeline column for is the Gantt view. It would be like having a Corona without a lime. You need to use the Gantt view inside of monday.com in conjunction with the timeline column. Uh, and then it makes a lot of sense. So if you add a Gantt view up the top here and then just go to settings and then select the timeline column, you can see how these span across. Now you can group by different things. You can group by the person, the status, for example, you can label it by. This isn't an introduction or a demo for the Gantt view. Hopefully you'll be familiar with it, but you've got a lot of different different options here and this is where um, it plays its its role so you can see that this spans from the start date to the end date we've got new item item one item two item three you can move them around accordingly as well what you can do is you can make them dependent on one another so if i create dependency uh, and then i'm just if you're not familiar with dependencies essentially you're saying that one item is dependent on another item and the dependency mode can be based on flexible strict or no action so if it's flexible you can see that this clearly and much better explains what flexible is versus strict versus no action at all so i'm just going to select flexible um, and then i'm going to say that item two is dependent on item one item three is dependent on item two and item three is dependent on or new item is dependent on item three there we go awesome so now if i go to my gamp view you'll be able to see that there's a connection between the different timelines for each of the different items and then because i selected flexible if i move one they all move but if i move it back it does not move so that if i move it would then consequently update the timeline i can also make this smaller as well so if i want to reduce the number of days for this particular items timeline that would update on here and also the duration would update as well now i mentioned earlier about the milestones so if i go to the three dotted button here go to settings customize and then show set as milestone let's just hypothetically say that item three or let's go uh, new item item number four for example that's a milestone so let's say the 7th jan is a milestone we can then go on to our gamp view and we can see if we press auto fit the milestone is marked by the diamond and we can move the milestone we can reposition it but these are tasks and these tasks are working towards this particular milestone and we can see what is dependent on what in order to get to this particular milestone now the nice thing about this is we can also have a milestone and then tasks past the milestone and then more tasks so if i go to let's say 5th to the 30th of january because i think that's where we're working now um and then i say that new item uh number two hit enter is dependent on new item so if i go new item number two is dependent on new item we can see that the gamp view now reflects automatically task one two three to get to this particular milestone to then the following tasks can continue so you can see how the timeline column allows you to manage a larger project process within monday.com i think the dependency column is really helpful here and then the duration obviously is a useful tool as well what you can do is you can restrict the column editing if you don't want people to mess around with it or you can restrict the column editing of the timeline it's entirely up to you you can make changes on all of these on the Gamp view here as well. So hopefully this introduction to the timeline column makes sense, how you can best use it. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else, there's not really an enormous amount more to show you about the timeline column. You select a start date, select an end date. It works best in conjunction with the dependency and the Gantt view. Um, and then the duration feature is very helpful as well as the milestones. I appreciate this video. It's short and sweet. Uh, hopefully it guides you in the right direction to using timeline columns within monday.com. If you'd like us to help you set up monday.com for your business, check out the link below. We would love to help. If you do have any questions, queries, or ideas, make a comment below the video. I will do my best to answer them. If it's a really good question or an idea, I'll make a video answering your question. Anyway, thank you ever so much for watching. Hopefully I'll speak to you soon. Uh, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.